My name is Fernando Ruiz Lamas, and this is Financial Accounting 2, Lesson 0, Financial Accounting Basic Concepts. We aim at introducing a brief review about key accounting concepts previously explained in Financial Accounting 2. start remembering that financial reporting main aims are the capture, measurement, representation and communication to the stakeholders by means of financial statements, a company's wealth and its variations, and of any other information that represents the economic reality of an entity, both in quantitative and qualitative terms. This means that the company is the entity which reports through those financial statements. Financial reporting refers to the company itself. Outside the company, we will find different stakeholders affected by the company's operations and directly interested in the communications conveyed from the firm. First and foremost, the owners, but also creditors, customers, employees, suppliers, and the government, local, national, supranational, as an intermediary with the population of the territories where the firm carries out its business. All of them demand financial information from the company to assess its financial position and changes in it from previous periods. In order to meet with the demands of the different users of financial information, when measuring wealth and its variations, we identify two primary financial statements, the balance sheet or statement of financial position and the profit and loss account or income statement. The balance sheet measures wealth at a given date. Remember that we accountants refer from wealth with the term equity. As for the profit and loss account, it measures wealth or equity changes during the fiscal year, caused by the entity's operations. Here you can see the basic two column structure of a balance sheet. In accounting, we use the technique of the double entry bookkeeping, which means that we measure equity both directly as part of the column on the right and as the difference between assets and liabilities. Remember that assets of a company are its buildings, premises, machines, vehicles, inventories, and other materials needed for its business, but also cash and legal or contractual rights such as the ones on the firm's customers, when sales are not in cash, and other financial investments as well. The liabilities include debts with suppliers, employees, banks, and other creditors, tax payables, etc. Accordingly, since equity is the difference between assets and liabilities, put it another way, equity is what I've got less what I owe. The profit and loss account measures changes in equity during a time interval caused by the operations carried out by the company. Incidentally, legal periodicity is every year. Increases in equity are income or gains, whereas decreases in equity are expenses or losses. The company makes a profit when income is higher than expenses, but losses are accrued when expenses exceed income. There are other changes in equity 
different from the result or net income of the profit and loss account. It comes mainly from transactions with owners. At the end of the fiscal period, for instance, as of the 31st of December, if the fiscal year matches with the calendar year, the result for the whole year from the 1st of January to the 31st of December will be disclosed as part of the equity in the balance sheet. We call regularization of income and expenses. The journal entry will record at the date of the balance sheet in order to sum up in a single account within the balance sheet the net income as the difference between income and expenses accounts. Please notice that not all changes in equity come from the result or net income of the profit and loss account. Other changes in equity derive mainly from transactions with owners such as the issuance of new shares, dividends and other reimbursements to shareholders, treasury stock purchases and sales, etc. Along every fiscal year, a company's transactions bring on a number of changes in the different accounting elements. We record changes in assets and liabilities, we recognize new income and expenses, and other variations in equity, and so forth. Companies register these changes in a chronological order, on a daily basis, in a book, nowadays actually a computer file, named Journal Ledger. Annotations in this book follow the double-entry bookkeeping method. It means that we simultaneously register changes in two accounting elements using two columns for that purpose. Two columns we call debit and credit. Conventionally, recognition or increases in assets are written down in the debit column. As for liabilities and equity, the rule is the other way around. We credit liabilities and equity when we recognize them, which means that their balance increased. Accordingly, we debit assets when we recognize them, whereas the recognition or decreases in assets are registered in the credit column. But we are going to credit liabilities and equity when there is an increase in their balances, and in turn, we are going to debit liabilities and equity when we de-recognize them, that is, their balances decreased. Coming back to the structure of the balance sheet, this shows the measurement value of assets, equity and liabilities at the date this financial statement is elaborated. Hence, the numbers disclosed in the balance sheet stand for the accumulated registration in the journal ledger of increases and decreases in the value of assets, equity and liabilities. In accounting terms, the balance sheet discloses the balances or carrying amounts for those accounting elements. We now can understand why the left column, the one we put the assets, is the debit column, and the right column, which contains the figures of the equity and liabilities, is the credit column. Since the result or net income of the profit and loss account is part of the equity, income and expenses as changes in equity follow the same registration rule as the rest of accounts or components of equity when we fill in the journal ledger under the double entry bookkeeping method. This means that we debit expenses when we recognize them, 
since expenses are a decrease in equity. And with credit income, when we recognize them, as they are increases in equity. That's why, when we present the profit and loss account in a two-column format, we name debit the column of expenses and losses, and we named credit the column of income and gains. Remember, though, that there exist other variations in equity different from income and expenses, but just income and expenses are disclosed in the profit and loss account. In other words, the profit and loss account is an intermediate step to elaborate the balance sheet. We previously disclosed the composition of net income in the profit and loss account as the difference between income and expenses related to the company's operations. Then we transfer net income to the balance sheet as one of the reasons why equity changes.